Here is how to remove unnecessary files from Xcode. Uh, the first step is to remove device support caches, so to say derived files. Uh, we're going to go through all uh, all directories that you need to cache uh, clean periodically. Sorry. So the first one is this one. As you see, it occupies around two gigabytes. If you open the folder, there's only one file inside, which uh, yeah, it's impossible to guess what's inside. It's rather just one file. Yeah, so you, you need to clean it uh, from time to time, periodically, you need to check that file in the derived data directory. Mm, yeah, and after removing this directory, which occupies only 149 megabytes, it's not that much actually. So let's check, uh, let's move to the, let's, let's move forward to archive directory, which in my case is empty. Usually if you build a project, uh, it stores here. So every time, every and each time you build a project from Xcode, it will create or an uh, archive uh, you prepared to submit and it stores it there. The, the next folder is device support, which in my, in my case is two gigabytes. And this is for your physical device that you connected before to your Xcode and it created that uh, kind of reference files for this, symbols files for, for, your, for your personal device, which is maybe unnecessary for you to use, especially if you're using simulator stuff. Uh, so the next folder to check is device support. And this is very important because it stores all previous versions for iOS, which may be unnecessary for you. If you use only the current version, you don't need all previous versions. So you can remove those, uh, you can remove those uh, iOS versions that you don't really need. The same stands for Core Simulator. Uh, that is actually for log files only, and it takes only well, one megabyte, it's nothing. So this folder, you don't need to clean this time. And then platforms. For platforms, there are some platforms that you probably might not need at all, like Watch OS or Apple TV OS, in my case. I don't really develop for these platforms, and so I can remove them, safely remove them, and it won't affect anything. And it takes more than maybe five to ten gigabytes depends on what you delete and that's how it works it's the same for so actually you can remove it from xcode itself if you open xcode and you go to vin window and simulators you can uh, go for all your devices you can select them one by one and remove your devices and simulators you open this window and then you switch to simulators, you can remove all those simulators and then you can recreate them later. So you don't need to worry about keeping them because each of these devices, they keep, like they take some space and you can safely remove them. And then, and then from a common line, you can also remove all attached uh, libraries. I'll show you later. So after you removed all devices that you, you don't really use, so in my case, I only use maybe four devices, like iPad, the biggest one, uh, the latest iPhone, and then different sizes for iPhones as well. Because you need to, to upload to, to App Store, you need to provide those. Uh, it, it should work from, from the smallest 4.7 inch screen uh, to the biggest screen. So you need to check with all of them before publishing, but all other stuff is unnecessary really in my case so i can remove it but there is a bug because after you moved it it still appears there on the sidebar but actually it's already removed that's why that bug yeah it's a bug so uh, how would you remove them and then if you reopen this window you won't be able to see them anymore and you don't need to worry about it maybe iphone 8 and iphone 8 plus is there, there, there are two. They are still under active support. Maybe you can keep it. 
as for iPhone 11 I think I can remove it because now it's iPhone 12 so it's the previous version you can remove it safely I think because if, if it supports iPhone 12 and iPhone 8 it definitely supports iPhone 11 <laughs> which is kind of obvious and for SE and for iPod Touch, I don't really need them because yeah, there. Who 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 cares about iPod iPod Touch, which is not under active support? I mean, they don't produce it anymore. And these are devices that I need. Uh, it's for my purpose, right? Then I remove what uh, Apple Watch attached to each device, which I don't need right now, at least so I just remove them and that's how it goes uh, I think it's pretty much about it then maybe I need to close this window right now because yeah that's all devices I needed to keep in my case I think I can close this window right now sorry Wow, and I can close it, and uh, that's a screenshot. <laughs> so if you go to to devices again, you can recreate those devices uh, from scratch anytime. So you don't need to worry about uh, by accidentally removing some devices. As as you see, so for iOS version, you can pick the version you need. So if you remove them, you can run this command xc run simctl delete unavailable. So for those devices that are unavailable now, they will be removed. As you see, they're under devices, they're much less now than it used to be. So I removed some of them. For the next step, uh, you need to clean those platforms. Platform stands for iOS version 14.1 and 14.2 in my case. And also for Apple TV OS and Watch OS, which I don't need. And for Mac OS, of course, if I can remove them safely. And it takes more than 10 gigs think yeah so it takes some time to permit to remove them and yeah it, it takes some time because it's it's a lot of files to remove so after we moved it go to platforms and just copy in my case I just copy this directory and open it uh, so here we go to runtimes. In my case, it's iOS 14.1, which I want to remove because, well, because you need to remove, uh, you keep only one runtime simulator runtime, which is for previous versions because the current one is 14.3 actually, but yeah. I don't know why, but you have to keep at least one, even though when you have that simulator, it runs 14.3, but it's not there, maybe because it's a current version. And then you can list all simulators UUIDs by running this command, and you can list all available uh, simulators, sorry, not emulators. And mm, yeah, as you see, they're all 14.3 now. So that's what I wanted. Then, so we can delete with this command all unavailable simulators or with the current UID. So for the next step, actually, it's pretty much about it. You don't need to remove other stuff as well. And maybe, as you see, it's quite clean now. And well. Under downloads folder, what I have here, 
Well, I don't think there's something else to remove. 